There's a lot of talk about niches and different stuff like that. My channel kind of tends to fall into two or three buckets, as I'd call them. Basically, golf is an interest, Manchester United. There's some stuff on my teaching work and different things like that. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff is on self-improvement and some of the strategies I've been using as I work my way towards retirement. And that's basically what this year is going to be about, maybe journaling that. Um, I, I said in the profile uh, of my YouTube channel that I'm on a journey to improve 1% each day. That seems very little, but over time, that's incremental. Um, and I think if, if everyone buys into that, um, they, they will improve themselves. So hopefully if you come on the journey with me, it'll help you improve as well. You might improve more than 1% each day and that would be really, really good. But I think sometimes we can get caught up with our to-do lists and different stuff like that. I think Michael Hyatt was one he said it very clearly. Um, if we ended up with 12 things to do on our to-do list and only got four of them done, uh, we remember the eight we didn't get done. So that's why I'm kind of aiming for the 1% each day in that it gives me something that I can say I have achieved. And if I get more than that, I feel really good about it. Also, with regards to the to-do list, he advises picking maybe your top three for the day rather than the whole 12 from the point of view of if you get the three done, you can move into the, the others that are there. But if you have a top three categorized or set out and you get them done, you feel like you've achieved something that day. So... Realistically, a lot of what I'm going to talk about or concentrate on when I'm doing these individual ones is about self-improvement without the nonsense and trying to live your best life now. I put, I'm putting shorts in, yes, about uh, golf tips. I mean, like I'm chasing my own red in golf. And if, for those of you who don't golf, red is uh, a birdie in that or an eagle. It's, it's a, a score under par is red, usually on a card or a scorecard. So... You know, when we talk about chasing the red, we're chasing a score under par. But we have to be realistic about that. It's a bit like I, I'm I'm entering a different phase of my life as I'm uh, 60 year old on YouTube. I'm also a 60 year old golfer, a 60 plus year old golfer. So I'm a senior golfer. So I'm not a scratch golfer. I'm a weekend social golfer who enjoys it, but still wants to be competitive. But to be competitive, I have to be realistic and work that the red I'm chasing is within the parameters of the handicap I have. And currently my handicap is 20 plus. So that means on occasions I have two shots against par and a hole and I should be using them to my advantage. And I think sometimes in life we have to try and use the, the, the cards we're dealt in the correct way. And we have to look at them um, with, in, in the best way we can and in a positive way to use them to our advantage. So realistically, uh, throughout this, when we're looking at the life scenarios and the golf scenarios, I'm trying to cut the fluff, cut the bullshit, and give real strategies that work. Things that I've tried in a field, I'll let you know about, but also strategies that I've tried that have worked. And I've had 40 plus years of uh, work experience now in different uh, aspects of education working with schools, working with principals, working with individual teachers, and of course, working with the children I work with on a daily basis who have autism, ADHD, and social, emotional, and behavioral problems. And a lot of the calming techniques and the planning and strategies that I use around them can be applied quite easily to a person's work as well. So, you know, that's part of where I'm coming from too, to try and, um, you know, bring that into the forum and, a bring it into the in in a, in a way that a, is useful to you as a person, useful to you as an individual. Um, I also want to encourage people who are in the 40s, 50s, 60s bracket to start off on YouTube. Um, I mean, I, I talked about YouTube to me. One of the benefits of YouTube is it probably has become my my digital journal in some ways. We talk about journaling, so we do. Um, and it's become my digital journal in a sense in that I put all the stuff in there that I enjoy or I like, I think about. And, um, you know, when we talk about journaling, it might sound a little old school, but there are benefits of putting pen to paper. And I'm quite a paper person, even after 40 years. And I'm quite digitally um, au fait with different, um, a, you know, apps, 
a phones, a computers, laptops, iPads, Surface Pros, etc. I use all of them with my work, so I'm quite used to a uh, working with digital products. But I still find that a uh, there are benefits of putting pen to paper, and they're timeless, whether virtually or by hand. But I prefer by hand. Journaling can help you. Um, it gives you time to heal uh, from the past. You can look at what's happened. And you can write down your experience of your day or of your week or of some major event. And when you look back at that, you can look at it in a different light. Um, so in doing that, it gives you a chance to increase your own emotional intelligence. Also, the goals bit that I've already mentioned, we can look at that and talk about you know, the number of goals we have. We can set them into different categories. Um, I'm going to take different... Uh, you know, sessions that I do on YouTube and also maybe set up some uh, groups where I work with individuals uh, on, on coaching with regards to how to set your goals out, what sections we put them in, that they become more beneficial to you. Um, journey also improves your memory and improves your vocabulary. Um, and it strengthens your self-discipline and routine. And one of the major factors of success is having a routine, particularly a morning routine and maybe a close of day routine. And, you know, then there's the work routines as well. So routines is a whole other thing, another video that we need to go into or another session that we need to. Um, we also can use journaling in a sense to uh, increase our levels of creativity. Uh, I mean, like people have commented on my diaries or journals or whatever, and that there's a lot of color in them and everything else. I'll show you examples of them in another video. So well, it tends to be my kind of thing. It's how I, my mind works. It's how I'm quite a visual person. It also improves your self-confidence because we don't always give ourselves credit even for the small goals that we gain from the point of view of things that we achieve. The fact that you're journaling and writing things down about what you did today that you enjoyed, what you achieved today, what you want to achieve, and you can take those off and you can actually look back at them then later. It does improve your self-confidence from the point of view of it makes you realize you are achieving and you are moving forward. Again, it may be just that 1%, but you're actually doing it. Um, I mean, like, I, simple prompts online or, or to start with are, are very, very easy. Like, your favorite thing about yourself today, what do you do well? Um, one thing you wish you'd done differently today, and a, somebody in your life who made you feel safe today, or you had a good interaction with, those are simple things. But I go to the whole journaling bit and how I do it, and how I set up goals and different stuff like that a, in another one. And also look at, you know, uh, power naps and, and taking stuff like that and helping us get to the, the stage where those things all help us become better people. And really, at the end of the day, it's all about trying to help us become better people. And that's why I want you to join me in this journey on YouTube. Um, set your own YouTube channel up. Uh, log into mine. Log in. Uh, you know, we can, all, we can all interact with each other. Comment on how well it's going for you and everything else. But use the actual, use YouTube to comment and use a it to help you improve and cut the nonsense that it, it focuses you, makes you talk or whatever. You can set yourself up, live your best life now. That's what I'm trying to do all the time. And I'm in the transition phase. I'm in the autumn of my career, most definitely, maybe the winter of it because I'm in the last year of it. But I'm also in the autumn of my life as I move into my 60s. I have a couple of grandchildren now. That's something that's become a real uh, plus in my life from the point of view of the joy that they bring is something that's totally different from even when we had our own children. So that's something I'm looking forward to having more time with when I actually retire. Um, so they'll come into it too. I'll talk about all of those life experiences as we go. So I hope this encourages you to actually make a start on YouTube and um, you know actually try and use YouTube uh, from the point of view of you being maybe in that stage of your career, maybe you're early in that, maybe you're in the, the early stages of your teaching career and you may pick up some things that you can use from the point of view of actually uh, in school, in your work, in your social life, etc. So that's it for this one. Thank you for listening and taking the time. Do subscribe if you have a chance of doing that and do interact in the comments about how you felt about this video, what it gave to you and you know what you hope to come uh, or take from it. Once again, thanks for watching and um, we'll see you again soon.